Scorpio, this is your rest of October. Highest possible messages for you and or timeless when you come across this. We move into your season on the 23rd. So while we're at the tail end of the Libra season, and moving into November, just want to give you highest possible messages. Hope they resonate. Feel free to like, share, comment. My website link is below if you want to book a one on one reading. Nine of Pentacles could speak to the Eight of Pentacles in the upright work energy. First and foremost, Virgo energy channeling in, detail-oriented, philanthropic, volunteerism. This could be financial dependence, relying on a parent figure. Um, in this deck, it could be coming out of devil-like energy, because this figure here can't really see with the lighting, but he has like a AK and a crowbar. He looks rather menacing. So the positive aspect in this deck could be emerging from a toxic or tethered situation to some sort of devil-like figure. It could be a lifestyle, toxic person, habits, codependence. Scorpio. You're advised to remove yourself from this energy. Nine is also in regards to the homestead. So, could be something in the living situation. Going on. Let's see what else we have here. Ten of Pentacles. Okay, this is great. So, we're showing great progress. Um, this is again Virgo energy, but once removed from this toxic energy, this dark energy as well, this is very dark in regards to lighting, whereas this one's very kind of out in the open, out in the middle of the daylight, and um, just kind of an enthusiasm for um, life, you know, being channeled in this card. Ten of Pentacles is about cornerstones, foundations to build legacy and generational inheritance and wealth upon, so definitely moving in the right direction. This person is resonating and channeling abundance and freedom. Pentacles could be years, so in regards to the next decade, um, could be finances, health, uh, twists of fate, windfall, um, anything concrete in this material world that we inhabit. Okay, Ace of Wands, so this speaks to enthusiasm and exuberance, passion, the spark, ignition, um, incentive. Uh, it's an initiation card, an action card. Aces are about new beginnings. So you could really be kicking off of the, the dock or the seashore and really setting sail to new fiery beginnings that require consistent action. Um, both the Nine of Pentacles and the Ten of Pentacles is channeling earth energy, so grounded. Rather slow moving energy, I would say. I think of the earth signs. Um, Ace of Wands is kind of like hot, heated, passionate action movement. It's rather quick energy, fire energy. But, um, you know, if you look at these elements in regards to resources, I kind of see that they're good, grounded elements to work with. Thinking of, you know, building a campfire or something utilitarian, something very useful that you could always turn to uh, when needed. Something very functional. And then you have some water energy. Um, wherever there's fire and water, there's the Holy Spirit um, in regards to the elements of the tarot. So this Five of Cups in particular is lingering energy. Uh, maybe having to walk away from the past or some sort of past conflict. Um, Maybe some former lifestyle that you were accustomed with, that you really resonated with, but that you've probably outgrown. Um, again, this is your energy, Scorpionic energy, the Five of Cups. More on this spirit. Four of Wands. So it could have been a marriage or 
maybe even a funeral um, occurring in the area. Four Wands is about public recognition or celebration or a public event featuring a lot of people. So it could be some sort of mourning the loss of someone, either literally or metaphorically moving on from a marriage or a group of people. Maybe it could be this toxic situation that you had to remove yourself from or distance yourself from. Okay, you can see that figure. But moving forward, the energy seems very um, kind of just awe-inspired to be a new couple type situation where this individual is looking at this Ten of Pentacles with starry eyes. More on this, spirit. Right? Two of Wands, planning and strategizing. Mm, I always see this as a karmic card in this deck, though. So it's almost as if you're not out of the weeds yet. Again, it could be more lingering lifestyle habits that you brought into the next chapter of your life that you're being asked to let go or relinquish. And if you don't, then this chariot energy is kind of broken down wagon wheel on the side of the road. Um, lack of momentum, movement, lack of victory, lack of progress. This is imbalance, this is temperance in the reverse. So you kind of see that this person is struggling, almost as if he's struggling with the good and evil within himself, he or she. This is Sagittarius energy, Cancerian energy, Aries energy, more fire energy. A lot of Virgo energy, a lot of Aries and Virgo energy, Cancerian and Sagittarius energy. Okay, Scorpio season energy, Sagittarian energy, Knight of Wands in reverse. This is like a player card, competition card, game card. In the reverse, it's kind of unfriendly competition. Um, getting out of a stuck situation. So yeah, a lot of past resonances seemingly in regards to past energy um, keeps on picking up here where something kind of devolved into something competitive um, and was just not making any progress Scorpio let's see what's else where it is inside of it was, what it is, friends, family, work life, home life, associates. Okay, we have a three of wands here. Um, this is kind of like an authority figure. Kind of looks like a villain, an evildoer here. Really, just only concerned with their prerogative, their goal. Not necessarily concerned with who this person affects negatively in the process. Again, more Aries energy, three of wands. Eight of Wands, this is incoming victory, quick victory, incoming communication, Cupid's arrows. Spirit, more on this lingering energy in Four of Wands card. Is it a funeral? Is it a reunion? Seven of Cups here. Something in regards to options and possibilities. For new horizons. Nine of Wands here. This is more Sagittarius energy. This is sharing 
of warmth, of hearth, seemingly, again, more homestead energy. Could be a reunion, it looks like. Scorpio. Someone from the past. You got Mercury and Mars in retrograde still, so it could be a lot of tying up of a lot of past energy. Here's the Ten of Swords, Ten of Wands in the reverse, I read this as. Could have felt betrayed kind of in the subconscious area of your mind. Unwilling to put down a burden. Almost as if possibly blaming yourself. Scorpio. Spread a lot of light eyes, possible messages. Yeah, this is not tapped into the intuitive truths that are at your feet here. It's kind of like a perception is reality type energy. This is the Pisces Neptune card involving kind of dreams and the creative mind where a lot of our reality is co-created with the universe. The hero final reverse, this is carving your new path, your own path, trailblazing, um, going against tradition, and doing your own thing, and maybe because of it you had a falling out with this individual. Spirit more on this. Four of Pentacles in the reverse. This is investment in yourself and or holding on too tightly to probably how you thought that things were going to play out in your intuitive mind. Okay, so when we let go a little bit and give space for reality to co-create, then we allow the highest possible goods to not only come in but to be perceived. Eight of Pentacles in reverse, more Virgo energy. You could be spending a lot of time, you know, outside of work or, you know, working from home. So things are slowly moving. Spending a lot of time with family, soulmates, being able to see eye to eye with. This Knight of Wands wanted to turn in the upright. The Knights <clears throat> are about physical encounters and engagement. So you could be seeing eye to eye with a past soulmate. And kind of clearing the air on some things from the past. Knight of Pentacles in the reverse is something, again, channeling. Similar to the Chariot in reverse, like broken down on the side of the road type energy. Something that didn't work out. Uh, with this person from whence you last saw them. But them still being able to, like, pull a rabbit out of their hat, essentially. Giving you a wink and a nod that it's going to be okay. Kind of almost giving you some more passion and inspiration to set sail and set out for new horizons in your own regard if this person did so. And them coming back to see you kind of gives you confidence and courage to like take on the world and do something outside the box and do something that maybe you didn't have confidence and courage to do if this person hadn't overcome their own burdens and demons. I see the Queen of Cups in reverse here. So this person could have overcome alcoholism or some sort of substance abuse. And it's almost as if seeing their story you know, gave you just a whole bunch of new hope. But little do you know is that, you know, somebody really helped them out. You know, somebody really came through in the clutch for them. You know, and showed them you as something to look forward to. You know, to be reunited with family and showing them the importance of family and, and people to, um, to live for essentially and to love and 
we got the seven of uh, swords here. So this is planning and strategizing. Disaster averted energy. Um, between two worlds and two minds. <clears throat> Again, with that seven of cups, is picking the highest possible reality for you, the highest possible option. Okay, trying to avoid anything falling apart and essentially choosing your, your highest bliss and harmony, which seems to involve family. Okay, spirit, any more messages? Again, more contact, more reunion. Coming out of relationships with people that no longer serve your highest good. They were maybe telling you tales or stories. Really knowing the truth of the matter though. Okay, people who were just kinda living off of your energy. Maybe keeping you stuck. But you knowing like what was really right. Okay, coming out of this situation, coming out of this energy. And you finally learning your lesson that once you do come out come out of this toxic friendships energy, although it took a lot of strength, it kinda catalyzes the completion of a lesson for you, a huge chapter in your book. You know, when the chips are down, who's really there to, to stand by your side? Okay. So, very happy for you, Scorpio. I think there's a lot of decision-making. There's a lot of re reun uh, reuniting energy, reunion energy. And really knowing who's most important to you. Maybe because they left, but ultimately knowing you know, what comes first for you and who you value first and foremost for yourself. So all in all, lessons learned and I think a happy ending with that Ten of Cups energy channeled in. Um, again, this is rest of October and uh, moving into early November. Um, action steps that are on your plate are pretty much seeing friend versus foe and who's really a ride or die and who's kind of just living off of you and your energy and your stability um, for the wrong reasons and uh, just really truly just a very happy reunion energy is what I'm getting and um, kind of tying things together with that person um, where you may have left off on wrong terms or just not necessarily having an understanding with but uh, you know maybe finally able to move on forward with them in your journey okay and you know kind of coming to terms with maybe you did cut them out to an extent maybe superficially but really facing the choice that you made here with the Queen of Swords in the reverse and the full card in the upright and being brave enough and courageous enough to see where you played a role and how you could face this person again. Okay, show them who you've become. After such a long time of lack of communication, when you finally do confront this person you get a leg up on all of the negative self-talk and self-thinking that you thought was going on when really truly in reality it wasn't anything like that in regards to your relationship with this person so you know when kind of met face to face it tends to be that we try to keep the peace you know depending on where we place this person in our lives so things seem to you know truly work out for the best despite you know maybe fears of, of how this encounter or reunion is going to go so remain positive and um, 
you know, trust the good in others, you know, especially others from your past, um, especially if they're not a toxic person, if they're just someone that try to strike out on their own and, and live their own life, you know, um, that doesn't necessarily mean anything against you or negative against you. So this is what I got so far, just as overall general message. Um, good times, good holiday celebrations to come is what I'm getting, and reunions. But, uh, you know, a chance to make amends and to move forward in a good way, in a good light together. Um, feel free to reach out for a one-on-one -on -one reading. This is general, so it's going to be a superficial, you know, veneer over, over Scorpio's sign. But... I uh, would really love to work with you on your on your own journey and your own path and help illuminate some roadblocks for you so you can live your best life. So light and love to you, Scorpio, and appreciate your time.